Starting a car company is difficult. Starting a car company that successfully makes a profit and keeps customers happy is very difficult. Fisker have had a go at this twice and their second vehicle, the Fisker Ocean, was promising. The vehicle was built under serious financial pressure, but there are loads of videos out there that document the story of Fisker. But there aren't many videos that document what exactly is inside their battery packs. So I come down today to meet Will, who has one of these battery packs, a 113 kilowatt hour battery pack. And there's Will with his fire extinguisher ready. You ready to get started? Why not? Let's do this. Are you listening? That's right, people. I've heard stories of these vehicles getting written off with something as simple as a windscreen. Now, with no new parts being made, it's pretty clear that the vehicle this pack came from was gonna get broken down for parts. This is how it's ended up in Will's possession. He asked me if I wanted to come down and document what's going on inside this pack and lend him a hand in breaking it down for home energy storage. So, first step to get this pack apart is to make it as safe as possible, which means we've got to break the bus bars up and reduce the voltages down as much as we can. Now the way this pack is designed is we have power from the one side that goes all the way down and round and back up where it bridges and links to the next lot of modules. That means that we are limited in how low we can get the voltages unless we start snipping in between. But we want to keep as much of the bus bars here intact and as all of these cell taps because they might be used in future. Instead of having to make up our own cell taps for each cell, we can just use what is here, or Will can just use what's here in future. But we've got to get this rear motor bus bar out after we've got these ones out. So let's get started with that. So across the pack, we've got 381 or 382 volts. We can work that out based on how many cells they are. You said it was about half charged. Yeah. Um, okay. For us to make this pack safe, it's incredibly important for us to understand where the current goes. So here's a handy diagram. We are looking at a 102S 2P battery pack. So that makes 204 cells in here, which I estimate to be about 160 amp hours each. The three modules on the bottom all contain 16 cells in each row and there are two rows and these are doubled up. Effectively this design gives us a nice current path where the current snakes up, down, up, down, up and back down towards where all of our electronics, switching and BMS controls are. I quite like this design. So by removing our interlinking bus bars at the bottom end, we then can reduce the pack down to about 120 volts in each section, then pop our safety orange covers back on, and we have things as safe as we can for now. Way better than 382 volts, eh? Effectively, the top module is about 60 volts, each one of those, and the bottom module is two rows of 30 volts. That's the first thing dropped on camera. It's, co it's dip coated and then it's the wrapped and then it's wrapped again. And then it's got like anti-vibration material on it as well. I wonder, the top must just be for the cover. And to avoid contact with that, damage yeah. with this one rubbing. I mean, that is a bit... Maybe that's why they've gone for so many, because of its proximity to the other cable. So They're nickel plated by the yeah. looks of it. You reckon? There's a part number as well for each one, so they obviously assumed there'd be some kind of repairability. I mean, that, yeah, they're pretty thick. So there's a little centre cable here as well that runs all the way down to the front. I wonder if that's just to confirm if something's actually plugged into yep, this. that's part of your interlock, yep. There we are. 
That's probably one of the biggest bus bars in the whole battery. We'll find out, hey. Now that we know the pack is relatively safe, we can move on to yeah, the next step, which is wiggle. the battery management system. Ooh. Fisker didn't just buy cells. CATL co-developed and actually built the Ocean's battery pack. It's largely a CATL architecture adapted to a Fisker platform. So inside you'll see the typical well, CATL prismatic cell layout and cooling philosophy. But, in this case, mounts, interfaces and software are tuned for the ocean. Tuned for the ocean? Inside these black boxes we have the modular cell monitoring and balancing boards, or cell supervisory controllers. Think of these as the eyes and ears of the battery. They don't particularly do the brain's work, that's for the other board we'll get to next, but they carry out the balancing and they have small bleed resistors on them. This is a pretty standard part with some differences depending on which vehicle cattle would be using it for. So with the eyes and ears sorted, it's time to get into the brains of this battery Right, pack. let's go and take this apart over there. It's what I've been reduced to. Now I'm excited by this one because I genuinely don't know what's inside. I know what to expect, but we don't know exactly how they've set this one up. Is this board used in other vehicles, but with different software and maybe slightly different hardware outputs? Possibly. There we are. So this is the brains of the entire thing. There is a chip there, that's our main chip. And out of there, everything is done. And then it seems like on the other two boards is where the whole balancing goes on. On these boards, the balancing goes on, which then communicates it to this board. Should we have a look on the other side? So as expected, loads more components on the other side. It has a coating over all of this to protect it. But that is our main board. There is the marking for it. and it's got some nice little backing on there and it looks pretty hardy. This is why when it comes to repurposing EV battery packs that I'm a big fan of using the pack complete so you don't have to get into the voltages and you can make use of the hardy automotive grey components that are inside the pack. But obviously Will isn't doing this. He is using this for some other reason so maybe we should have a chat with Will and find out why on earth we are stripping down a Fisker Ocean pack, hey? Whee! The book club. <laughs> <laughs> so these packs are fairly rare. There's not, you know, thousands of them produced. So why on earth do you have this pack? Why is it in your possession and what do you plan on doing with it? My plan is to use it for home energy storage. So charge up at the cheap rate overnight or from solar and then discharge to the house during the day and the local grid during the peak. Nice. Um, there's not many around because there's not many on the road and I think a lot of owners are worried about the tiniest little dent in their car writing them off so they're driving a lot more carefully. But they come up sometimes for sale and nobody seems to have a use for them so I thought why not try and reuse one of them and see if it's doable. Okay, so as you probably know, I recommend people to use an entire EV pack Yep. But we've got the lid off here and we're breaking it up. Why on earth are you breaking it up and not just using the pack as it comes and not messing with any of the high voltage? What's why? What's the purpose behind that? The, there's two main reasons. So I use a Victron setup at home, so that will only run it up to 66 volts DC. But the real big reason is nobody's done any sniffing or capturing of data from these packs at all. Again, because there's so few cars are on the road, yeah. there isn't that um, drive by people to want to reuse secondhand packs, unlike Model 3s and Model Ys, where there's hundreds of packs out there at any one time for sale and thousands of written off cars, and there's a lot of knowledge on them. There just isn't for these, and yeah. I decided to take a less risky route 
um, because I could be waiting forever for an opportunity to spend hours and hours with a car to get all the messages and so forth that I need and that data and then trying to make it work with a pack that's not in a car. I just thought I could be there for years. Let's try and just strip the modules out and the good bits that could work and go from there. And yep. No, that makes, that makes complete sense. In your case, that is the best op option, mm -hmm. isn't it? Because, yeah, as you say, you can't sniff that CAN data easily without a working vehicle. Trying to find a working vehicle, you're going to have to spend a load of money and have a second car just to read the data. And then do you want to keep that car? You know, yeah. In your case, it's way easier to just do this. So, shall we get into it, eh? Yep, let's start awesome. it apart. Ladies first. <laughs> People of the internet, I know that most of you are not going to be hacking apart batteries like this to be using for home energy storage. YouTube tells me that you're gonna have solar panels. Okay, YouTube doesn't tell me, but I know my people. And this is where the product Energy Genie comes in. Ooh. Their patented solution is designed to work with your chosen home energy products, and then it uses the historical data and weather forecasts saving sessions from Octopus along with your tariffs and all of this data to basically work out how best to use all of these technologies together. Now you can kind of do this manually by setting when this does this and then setting when this does this and it can all get a bit out of hand and you can get a bit obsessed with it, don't ask me how I'd know, but honestly this product just brings it all together. Why would you do this is the question. Why would you bother? The average customer makes 300 to 700 pounds a year in savings due to making this system work efficiently. That's pretty awesome to me, hey? Energy Genie are so confident that you're gonna like their product that if you go to their website, purchase, you can try it for three months. Honestly, you cannot ask better than that. Check Energy Genie out at energygenie.co.uk. Back to the video. Gubbins. Oh, it's another tray to put bolts in as well. We've got a whole load of bus bars in there. Looks like we have a giant fuse. An EV rated 700 amp fuse. There's our two contactors. So this is our negative side into there and our positive side which goes through our fuse and then along to the positive terminal in the battery. So we're going to need to undo this one here, undo this link here and pull them out. Day one, relay two, relay three, another fuse under there. I mean, that's a chunky fuse, isn't it? Yeah, 700 amps at 400 odd volts. As we continue to dig deeper, we spot three relays and a resistor. Now I didn't work this out at the time, but what do you think that could be for? Goes to our bottom board. And then obviously we've got this contactor here, which we'll pull out in a second and see what that says. But there's like measurements here as well. So there's multiple measurements at different points. Now at first we thought this was some sort of measurement of pack voltage that the BMS could then use but it became clear that resistor there is the key to understanding what these relays are for. These are the pre-charge relays for both the positive and negative and a relay for bleeding down voltage afterwards. Next up is, uh, not that, the pack shunt, which measures current that goes in and out of the battery and the BMS then calculates this. And this is how you get your wonderful display on the dash that tells you your range is depleting. You know, I wonder if Fisker Ocean owners need some sort of dash display that shows how long it will be until their Fisker Ocean breaks down and they have absolutely no dealer support. Hmm. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six cables. So it's not just gonna be like a 
they feed into that main loom as well or back to that control unit while we try and work out every single component that is up this end of the battery oh the wonders of hindsight let's just put up some photos of all the individual parts that we've got right the theme of this battery pack is modularity we see a pressure sensor from honeywell we see a current sensing unit which has cattle markings which might deal with the shunt but might also deal with this other type of current sensor. We see contactors which again are off the shelf products and then we see this power fuse which we've not talked about yet. Well, we could take it out now because it's the only bit that's really wanted for and I another guess, battery pack. I guess you don't want to sort of damage it. No, not really. Because it's, it's a usable it. part isn't it? Yeah. That one off under your finger as well. <laughs> I'll let you finish that. <laughs> I was trying to be careful with it. This pyrofuse sits on the positive side of the cells and then leads towards our contactor. So we've got pyrofuses in here, we've got massive big fuses, so quite a lot of protections as we would expect inside a battery that contains over 100 kilowatt hours of cells. And talking of cells, don't you think it's time that we should be getting these cells out of this battery? Hmm. Now, you could very possibly be thinking, hey, battery man, how come you guys are using an angle grinder near that battery pack? You know there's a lot of energy in there, right? And that angle grinder is making sparks. Well, you see, the cells are effectively glued down with a sort of epoxy to the cooling plate below. So... They weigh over 60 kilos, we reckon 60 to 80 kilograms. And there is no physical way to pull them up. So we need to find a way in using maybe some sacrificial cells while also not damaging them to pull them out. And this is where pack design has gone. What you're watching is hours of struggling, <laughs> I'm not even joking, condensed into a small amount of time as we tried to cut through aluminium with a small amount of discs that we had. Just as we're about to finish for the day, we find that the aluminium bracing that goes across has hidden bolts through it. Honestly, these packs are not ideal for home energy storage and therefore it does not receive the Battery Man Home Energy Storage EV Battery Approval. Okay. There is so much more to learn about these battery packs, but that's going to have to be in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any idea on how you might get the cells out of a pack like this, then drop it in the comments.